hello everybody so without further delay so let's get started with the uh, the next revision that is in the as 33 which talks about earnings per share so earnings per share is given by the formula each upon wales is a each as in earnings available to equity shareholders or earnings attributable to equity shareholders divided by weighted average number of equity shares so how do you get each each is nothing but profit after tax minus preference dividend so preference dividend you will deduct under every circumstance huh? no sir whenever there is a preference shares first check we know that now we don't have any category for preference shares preference shares are either classified as a financial liability or equity if preference shares are classified as financial liability then interest charges you would have already booked as per the acm table that means no need to deduct any preference dividend because it is already it is booked you book finance charges on such preference shares and that is already accounted so no need to do any further accounting or for it so even if the question says a dividend is declared on such preference as classified as financial liability you don't have to do anything simply ignore because it's already accounted however if preference has a classified as equity then you need to check whether it's a cumulative preference shares or non-cumulative preference shares so if it is a cumulative preference shares that means dividend goes on accumulating you cannot escape from it then deduct the preference shares whether it is declared or not in the current year whether the dividend preference dividend is declared or not in the current year, irrespective of that, deduct the preference dividend. However, if it is a non-cumulative preference shares, deduct the preference dividend from PAT only if it is declared, otherwise not required to be done. Okay, that's one. And another, then as a second component of your numerator part we have looked at. Now the denominator part is weighted average number of equity shares. It is not number of equity shares. It is weighted average number of equity shares. So you have to assign the weights based on the days, but usually we assign the weights in months. This range you can calculate on an individual basis or cumulative basis. This is how you calculate it individually. Suppose opening balance of shares. At the year beginning, company had 1 lakh equity shares. They issued 50,000 equity shares on 1st October. Then there are two ways you can calculate weights if this is a thing. One individually. Individually means this 1 lakh shares was there from the beginning. So you can do 1 lakh into 12 by 12 whole year. And this 50,000 shares came only from 1st October and year ends on 31st March. That means it was there only for 6 months. So calculate like that, you will get the weights. That is individual approach. Or you can calculate under cumulative approach, meaning from, from 1st January or from 1st April till 1st October, 6 months, company had 1 lakh shares. Thereafter, it changed. So, we'll take 1 lakh into 6 by 12. Thereafter, what happened? Company issued 50,000 shares more. That means now company has how many shares? 1 lakh 50,000 shares for the rest 6 months. So, take 150 into 6 by 12, you'll get the wins. Whether you work individually or cumulatively, the final answer of wins will be same. Okay. All right. Dates are not that important. It's fine. Okay, the next one is bonus shares. Sir, EPS is a chapter where, no sir, theory is not much important. Practical problems are more important. So quickly, I'll run them through the few components and we'll try to solve more number of questions from India's 33 because that is important. Okay, so theory, give me some time. I'll quickly run through them. Mm? Okay, first is bonus shares. Bonus shares means additional shares, additional equity shares given by the company at free of cost. Since bonus shares are given at free of cost, due to bonus shares, there is no impact on earnings. For your EPS, we need earnings in the numerator, right? Earnings attributable to equity shareholders. Since bonus shares are issued at free of cost, there is no impact on earnings. That's the reason due to bonus shares, each as a numerator will not get impacted anything. Okay, fair enough. That's the reason we say on bonus shares, you should not assign any weights or better approaches. You assign the same weightage as you give on original shares. Meaning on original shares only, you will give bonus shares, correct? Whatever weightage you are giving for original shares, same weightage you give for bonus shares also. Because bonus shares, you don't receive any money. That's the reason. Okay. Okay. Now, just let's assume that originally we had 1 lakh shares. Okay. <clears throat> Fair enough. That means on or if opening balance of equal, if you from the beginning, if you have 1 lakh shares means what weightage will you give it on 1 lakh shares? 12 by 12. So on this, let's say bonus issue is issued in the ratio 1 is to 1. That means since on original shares, you are giving 12 by 12 weightage, whatever bonus shares you are issuing on this original shares, since you are issuing bonus in 1 is to 1 ratio. So if you have 1 lakh shares before, you'll receive 1 lakh additional shares with bonus. So on this bonus shares also, you'll give 12 by 12 weightage. Okay. Suppose the company had also issued on 1st October 50,000 shares. There afterwards on 1st November, they came, in, came out with bonus. So the date of bonus is irrelevant because based on the date, we don't give bonus because bonus shares are given at free of cost. So on what shares bonus has been given? The weight will be given considering that. So bonus you will give on two shares now, one on 1 lakh shares, another one is 50,000 shares. On 1 lakh shares, how much weightage will you give? 12 by 12 because it is there from the beginning. When you give weightage for 50,000 shares, 50,000 shares was issued only on 1st October. That means it was only issued for 6 months. So any bonus issued on this 50,000, since the bonus is given in 1 is to 1 ratio, on this 50,000 shares issued also, you will get 50,000 bonus. 
on this you will give only 6 by 12 or 6, 6 by 12 wala weightage because on this you are giving 6 by 12 weightage so the bonus received on, on that also you will give the same weightage like that so whatever weightage you give it on original shares same weightage you give it for the bonus shares also that's a simple thumb rule okay and one more thing is whenever there is a bonus shares you need to restate previous year ka eps meaning you need to recompute previous year ka eps because eps calculation is part of your in your spl you have to show eps calculation also and we don't prepare pnl account just for the current year we also give comparative uh, last year ka pnl also we prepare for comparative purpose so last year eps also you need to give for comparative purpose so whenever there is a bonus issue happened you need to restate previous year eps as well because if you don't do that it will lead to distorted number i've shown you the logic and all in the regular class i'll not go too much into depth over here okay so whenever there is a bonus shares previous year eps also needs to be re restated the simple way to do this is think that the bonus has happened in the last year itself and recompute last year ka eps just that think that for this is how you calculate the restated one otherwise it lead to a uh, distorted comparison that is the reason okay so like this you do the restatement this restatement is required for bonus shares whenever you do stock split up whenever you do stock consolidation for all this you need to do a retrospective adjustment meaning restatement is necessary in that particular case okay next corresponding number is right shares right shares means right shares are also additional shares given to existing shareholders but not at free of cost but at a discounted price Compared to the market price, right shares are not issued at market price, but at a little discount compared to the market price. Say, suppose the market price of the share is, let's say, 150. Right shares will not be issued at 150. Let's say, right Shishuka exercise price is 100. In The worth of the share is 150, but the company is giving right shares at 100 because they're giving it to existing shareholders. No? So, company will usually would like to give extra benefit to existing shareholders. Hence, they'll issue it at a lower than market price. Okay. So since these shares are issued at lesser than market price, so how much lesser or how much discount here? 50. This represents your bonus element. That means indirectly we say even right shares has a bonus element. So whenever there is a, they have given you right shares well a problem, you need to do right shares well accounting as well as bonus component also needs to be considered there. So how do you approach right shares well a problem? I told you, I've given you a logical way of presenting in regular class, but I told you our ICA follows formula approach. So in our examination, we'll follow the formula approach only. So the first thing we will, uh, compute for right shares is what's a something called theoretical x right price per share how do you calculate theoretical x right price per share it is nothing but value of old shares plus value of right shares divided by number of old shares plus number of right shares it's basically your average price theoretical right price uh, theoretical x right price per share is nothing but fancy name but in a way you're computing average price that's all so take the value of old shares plus you're giving right shares now no so take the value of right shares divided by total number of shares here totally how many shares we have old shares plus number of right shares you do that you're going to get theoretical x right price per share and theoretically as per books we argue that once the company issues if the company comes up with the rights issue meaning if the company issues right shares the the share price in the market should fall after the rights issue we say that the market price of the share will fall the reason is one is right shares are issued at discount another one is there is a little negative sentiment in the market saying the company has issued right shares means they have raised money how they will utilize this money, there may not be too much clarity. That's the reason theoretically we say, I'm not saying practically this will happen. Theoretically, the books will argue that after the rights issue, the market price of the share will fall. So what you can use that as a checkpoint is once you compute theoretical x right price per share. No, let's say market price here is 150. Theoretical x right price per share should be lesser than 150. If you are getting any number greater than 150, then definitely something, some calculation hodgepodge you have done. So have a look at it once again. That's one way to check it. Another one is, just now we discussed, even right shares has an element of bonus because right shares, we are not issuing it at right price. We are issuing it at discount. The discount element represents bonus. So here bonus element, to calculate bonus element or to capture bonus element, we calculate something called adjustment factor. Okay. So that means one share is not worth one now, one share is worth something else. So the trick is, when you calculate adjustment factor, that adjustment factor that you get should be greater than one. Mathematically, you can get a number greater than one only when the numerator is greater than denominator. That's all you can remember. Okay. So now you know theoretical x right price per share will be greater than market price or lesser? Lesser. That means what? Market price should be in the numerator divided by theoretical x right price per share should be in the denominator. Instead of market price per share, we are, our books we call it as come right price per share. Come right price per share means what is the market value of the share or what is the value of the shares before rights issue? Before the company came out with rights issue, what is the price of one shares? That to be called as fancy name called come right price per share. So that should be in the denominator, that would be a higher number, divided by theoretical x right price per share. So if you do that, mathematically, you will get a number greater than 1. This is your adjustment factor. Since this adjustment factor includes bonus element, what you need to do is, this adjustment factor, you need to multiply it to the old shares. Because on old shares only, you will give bonus, no? So you multiply this to the 
adjustment factor to the, to the old shares and accordingly compute. And this multiplication of adjustment factor should not only be done for current year, it should also be done for last year. Because whenever there is a bonus, previous year ka EPS also should be restated. So this multiplication of adjustment factor happens for current year also, next year also. I'll take you through the problem. First, I will run through the theory. So bear with me even if you're not getting it. So those of you who have solved will be able to understand this. If you're first timers, no problem. Give it some time. We'll come to the problems also. Okay. Sir, you note kaha milega. <laughs> Sir, it is notes if you want. You can purchase it from our website learn.arivopro.com or online.arivopro.com. Okay. You can go to that website. From that, you can buy the books. It's called a chart book or revision book. You can select that and give your address. The books will be delivered to you. Okay, G. Can I move on, G? Yes, G. Okay, next something we calculate something called depths, sir. Depths means first we have to in when in EPS, no, sir. There are two types of EPS we calculate. One is basic EPS, another one is a diluted EPS. Basic EPS we'll call it as BEPS. That is given that normal what we learned now is BEPS. Another one is depths. Depths as in diluted earnings per diluted earnings price per earnings per share. So how do you get depths is simply it's depths is not really uh, another fancy formula. It's it's a simple adjustment. Take the each. You already calculated each for BEPS purpose, no? Take that and add dilution adjustment. Take similarly wins, weighted average number of equity shares that you have calculated for basic EPS. To that you add dilution adjustment. So what is this dilution adjustment? For that, let's go one step back. So diluted EPS will only come if company has something called POS. Only if company has something called potential ordinary shares, POS. Only in that particular case, uh, the company needs to calculate debts. If companies don't have POS, then debts ka calculation is not necessary, meaning debts and debts will be same in each way. That's the reason. So what is this P uh, POS? POS couple form is potential ordinary shares. That, that means <clears throat> they are those ordinary shares or POS are those instruments. Currently, they are not equity shares, but in future, may they may become equity shares. POS means those instrument. Currently, they are not equity shares, but in future, may they may become equity shares like convertible preference shares, convertible debentures, share warrants, etc. etc. If company has issued these sort of instruments, then such instrument we call it as POS. And if POS is there, then you need to calculate debt separately because it will be varied. Okay, that is one. All right. So now what you need to do it is how the debt calculation works is now company has POS, right? Has this POS instrument already become equity shares now? No, they may become in future. So what debts is trying to calculate is if those POS instrument, potential ordinary shares, if they get converted into equity shares today only, if they get converted into equity shares this year only, how the EPS will change? That is what debts is trying to calculate. If this POS gets converted into equity shares, what will happen to EPS? EPS will not be same. EPS will change. That revised EPS or changed EPS only is what we are trying to project as diluted EPS. Okay, sir. That's the reason what we do is take basic EPS ka each and add dilution adjustment. Now, let's take the example of convertible debentures. If you have convertible debentures, so this is a POS. Sir, if you convert this convertible debentures into equity shares, what and all will happen? On this convertible debentures, should you have to pay interest anymore? If you convert this instrument into equity shares, means interest no more company has to pay. That means there will be savings in interest. So if interest saves means earnings available for equity shareholders or profit attributable to equity shareholders will increase. That is what we mean by dilution adjustment. Hence, whatever interest you are saving, you will add. Just not the interest, you have to take interest into one minus tax rate. You can't do interest, you have to do interest into one minus tax rate. Why is that? Sir, interest is an expense. If one expense is not there, if you convert debentures and equity shares, one expense will not be there. If an expense is not there, means profit will increase. If profit increases, means tax also will increase. So that means though there is a savings in the form of interest, there will be an increase in the form of tax. Correct? That's the reason we also always take after tax savings while interest. Hence, we di directly don't take interest. We do interest into one minus tax rate. So that is the dilution adjustment impact on each. Similarly, there will be a dilution adjustment impact on BEPS. What is that? Sir, if you're converting this into equity shares means you have to give additional equity shares. No? Let's say on conversion, you're issuing 10,000 more equity shares. If you're converting uh, debentures, you will give more equity shares. I'll assume that to be 10,000. That is your dilution adjustment in weights. So consider these two and calculate the revised EPS. That we call it as diluted EPS. That's all. Okay. All right. Other things and all, whatever is a problem specific pointer, I'll directly take you through all this through the problems itself. Okay. Next is something called contingently issuable shares. These are shares which you will issue provided certain conditions are satisfied. So in basic uh, basic EPS purpose, you'll consider CIS only when the conditions are satisfied. This should come here. It's a typo. Okay. For diluted EPS, there is no weights wala drama. For COS, you don't issue any debts. I mean, you don't consider any weightage wala drama. If it is fulfilled, you will consider fully. If it is not fulfilled, you don't consider anything. Again, we'll take up one question on CIS again. 
options and warrants also i'll take you through in the problems only all right what happens in options and warrants is normally let's say market price of the share is 100 rupees you would give some options you would give some options to some maybe some employees or third party whoever usually these are given to employees it could be given to third party also all right the company has given an option to let's say mr a let's say z limited has given an option to mr a to buy thousand shares z limited has given an option to mr a to buy thousand shares in future at let's say 80 rupees per share at 80 rupees per share meaning let and the, this uh, agreement will say when the he has to purchase let's say in six months or uh, let me let me say one month so a has an option to buy thousand shares after one month by paying 80 rupees to the company all right this is an option all right now what are we trying to calculate is have this option already become equity shares no if it has already become equity shares means it will come as part of basic eps basic eps considers the exact number of equity shares already existing it considers how many equity shares are already existing and if, if how much of our equity shares are there that is taken into consideration for basic eps purpose but these instrument have not got converted into equity shares they may become equity shares in future and that means this option is what sir? this option comes under or it will be known as pos okay now think what, what has happened over here let's say the market price of this option is 100 rupees market price of one share is 100 rupees but a is able to purchase this only for 80 market price is 100 but a is able to purchase it only for 80 that means there is a discount element involved over here yes or no? how much is that 20 all right that discount element you have to consider for pos wala calculation okay fair enough that you, that effect you need to give it in your eps that effect is given in your diluted eps how to do that i'll tell you through one problem only maybe better okay fair enough so basically yes it's same like right shares over here also okay but right shares have actually happened that's the reason it will form part of basic eps wala calculation these and all have not got exercised yet they will be exercised in future for the simplicity i've taken one month but generally it will be six months eight months whatever so it has not got exercised in the current year so hence it will only affect depths wala calculation how to do that we'll see yes all right so i think we'll let's not waste too much of time uh, yeah someone is saying tala one yesterday <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> tala one yesterday all right great great <laughs> good on rcp lost felt little bad but yeah at the, that side is anyway it was doni so no hard feelings that way <laughs> okay uh, excuse me Okay, people, let's get started with a few questions. Uh, question number nine, we'll take up this. On 30th, at 30th June 20X1, the issued share capital of entity, entity, entity consisted of 15 lakh ordinary shares of one each. That This is already there. Okay, fine. On 1st October 20X1, the entity issued 12, rupees 12 lakh 50 thousand, 8 percent convertible loan stock. So this is convertible debentures you have issued basically. Instead of debentures, sometimes you may, they may use the word convertible loan stock. There's nothing but convertible debentures at par. 100 rupees nominal value of stock may be converted at any time at the year ended 20x6 to x9 into the number of equity shares. They saying, read this line once again, each rupees 100 nominal value of loan stock may be converted at any time during the year 20x6 to 20x9. So conversion option could be done anytime. These are convertible debentures. Conversion could happen anywhere between x6, x6 to x9, anywhere in three years into number of ordinary shares set out below. So they have given, yes, if you convert on 30th June 20x6, it is 135. You will give 135 equity shares. For, if you have to pay 100 rupees to the debenture holders, you will give them 135 shares. That's what they're trying to say here. For each 100 nominal value of loan stock. So if you have to pay 100 rupees up to the debenture holders, means you will give 135 shares. Okay, like that. If you convert it on 30th June 2007, you will have to pay 130 shares. 30th June 2008, 125. 30th June 2009, 129. Like this. They have given multiple options. Sir, which one to choose? Sir, whenever for India's 33 purpose, whenever multiple options are given like this, you will always choose that option that gives you the highest dilution. You will always choose that option that gives you the highest dilution. Okay. Meaning choose the one which has the highest number of equity shares. That will give you the highest dilution. So in this case, what is the maximum number of shares option? 135. So you will always select 135. The highest number of equity shares you will select because that will cause the maximum dilution. Because the very intention of deep depths. See, these are POS, right? This is not yet converted. So that means this is POS. The intent POS means you need to calculate depths. The intention of depths is to calculate if you convert this instrument, how much your EPS will reduce by. So that's the reason you want to give the most conservative figure or the most as much reduced figure as possible. That's the reason we take the most dilutive or the highest number of equity shares for these sort of calculations. Okay, that's one. If loan sh uh, shares are not converted by 20x9, then it will be redeemed at par. Then you'll pay back. So here, no, sir, current year, no, so it's given in odd. Okay, it's not April to 31st March wala year. Next line where they have told it in fact over here somewhere here. Okay, for the year ended 30th June 20x to x3. 
so year is ending on 30th june so year will begin on 1st july so current year here is 1st july 20x2 to 31st 30th june 20x3 previous year is 1st july 20x1 to 30th june july to june is the year that they have called out over here okay next is the return equity conversion option is accounted as a derivative liability and mark to mark accounting so they are valuing this under fptpl method they are saying so that means there will be some uh, uh, fair value loss through what derivative liability mark to mark loss through pnl so they are valuing it under fptpl method indirectly they are saying so any fair value gain loss you will transfer it to pnl so here there is a fair value loss of 2500 and 2600 for 20x2 and x3 respectively two years data they have given it is assumed that there are no tax consequences from these losses these fair value losses mean you don't have to you will not get any tax benefit okay so because due to loss pnl will reduce no so tax loss probably will not allow you to uh, claim this deduction is what they are trying to say profit before interest and fair value movement and taxation for both the years they have given sir so this is profit before interest and fair value so that is what they have given for uh, june 20 x2 it is 825 july 20 x3 it is 9895 they have given you need to calculate bips and dips okay basic eps and diluted eps okay profit before interest they have given we want profit at basic eps how do you get basic eps profit attributable to equity shareholders divided by weighted average number of equity shares so what they have given is profit before interest and fair value movement first deduct the fair value movement how much is the fair value movement sir uh, fair value loss they have only given 2500 and uh, 2650 respectively careful which years you are plugging in the number don't interchange the number in hurry hurry respective years ka 2500 is a loss for 20x2 2650 is a loss for 20x3 put them in there then this is profit before interest deduct interest also but one thing is this instrument was issued on 1st october 20x1 i mean not current year last year 1st october 20x1 last year begins on 1st july but the instrument came in october so july august september for first 3 months in the last year this instrument was not there it was only there for 9 months so in the last year you will calculate interest on this only for 9 months so 1250000 into uh, 8% into 9 this is la your last year no this is for last year and this for current year so last year you only calculate 9 months ka interest so it deducted in the current year yeah last year it, uh, it got issued that means in the current year whole year the instrument was there so current year you can calculate the interest for full year so 12 lakh 58000 into 8% will give you 1 lakh so deduct that you will get profit before tax deduct the tax there what are they told tax rate is somewhere they must have given the tax rate now yeah tax rate here is 33% deducted but careful don't calculate tax on this amount because what did they say this fair value loss has no tax consequences so don't deduct you have to deduct this to get the profit but to calculate tax don't consider fair value tax because they only clearly told there is no tax consequences so from profit before interest and tax deduct only interest so 895 minus 1 lakh you do and that you calculate 33% for tax purpose because problem specific requirement only deduct interest and then calculate tax rate same thing you do here you will get the tax okay then you will get profit after tax okay there is no preference shares and all so that means this only becomes what pack only becomes earnings attributable to equity share holders so you got your ish this is your ish earnings attributable to equity shareholders then you need what wins i think that they have given they told company had how many shares from the beginning 15 lakh shares they didn't tell that any extra shares have been issued only 1 15 lakh shares we had and we have it from the beginning so last year also 15 lakh this year also 15 lakh so ish divided by wins will give you eps of this much this is for the basic eps wala calculation okay next is your diluted eps how do you calculate debts by giving what sir you already calculated uh, each for basic eps purpose no so what is the each for basic eps purpose 5 lakh 30000 okay to this you need to add dilution adjustment that's all don't do it from the beginning they've done it from the beginning no need to do directly you can take this okay like this you can solve take the each take the each for your basic eps or basic eps wala each you take to this simply you add a dilution adjustment okay what is the dilution adjustment here so it's a convertible debentures no so if you convert this debentures debts is trying to calculate that only if you convert this debentures then what will happen to your eps so if you convert this debentures what will happen we are calculating first we'll calculate it for the uh, last year then we'll come for the current year so last year what is the basic eps 5 lakh so take that to add dilution adjustment so if you convert the debentures into equity shares interest you can say yes interest is an expense if an exp if you convert debentures into equity shares means expense will reduce one end, one expense in the form of interest will reduce if interest reduces means tax will increase so directly don't add the interest amount always add interest into one minus tax rate okay though the interest savings is there tax also will increase that's the reason always consider interest into one minus tax rate what is the interest sir interest is 75000 so 75000 into one minus tax rate you do one minus 0.33 which is nothing but 1.67 so 75000 into 0.67 you do you'll get after tax wala interest so that means uh, your uh, you'll get this one correct no and one more thing sir if you convert this debentures into equity shares 
Henceforth, you don't have to measure it under FBTPL method. No, see only for financial liabilities and all you have FBTPL method, F, uh, ACM method, etc, etc. Once you convert it into equity method, you don't need any fair value because on equity, there is no obligation to repay. That means all this fair value loss and all, no, you'll get it in future. Huh? No, you'll be able to save this, correct? If this fair value loss is dormant, not there, means profit will increase. So profit attributable to equity shareholders also will increase. So add this. So you should not take this into one minus tax rate. Huh? No, you should not do into one minus tax rate for this. Why? Because they only clearly told in the problem, fair value has no tax consequences. If they had told fair value has tax consequences, so meaning on this also I, I would have done into one minus tax rate. But in this problem, you can't do, you should not do it because fair value has no tax consequences. So do this, you'll get, uh, what sir? Uh, you'll get uh, base, uh, you'll get the each for your debts purpose, which is that's what they've called out, got here, 5 lakh 50 to 750. You got your numerator, then we need one more, which is what? Sir? You need your <coughs> denominator, <coughs> excuse me, veins for diluted EPS purpose, same thing. What is the veins for uh, basic EPS purpose? 15 lakh. To that, you add dilution adjustment. What is the dilution adjustment here? Sir, if you convert equity shares, uh, convertible debentures into equity shares, you have to issue more equity shares. No, that they've given in one ratio. If you have to pay 100 rupees to the debenture holder means you have to, you will issue 135 shares. If you have to pay 100 rupees to the debenture holders means 135 equity shareholders you will pay. Okay. You have to pay 100 rupees to these debenture holders. Ah, no, no, no. You have to pay 12 lakh 50 thousand. The value of this debenture is 12 lakh 50 thousand. If you have to give 100 means you will give 135 shares. If you have to give 12 lakh 50 thousand means how many shares? If you calculate, you're going to get uh, 12 lakh 50 thousand into 135 divided by 100. That's what you'll get. But don't take full number over here. Why, sir? Sir, see, EPS calculation is a mathematical number. Whatever you have done in the numerator, same thing has to be done in denominator. In the numerator, did you consider interest for the whole year or only nine months? In the last year, you considered interest only for nine months. Why, sir? Because that instrument was issued in the last year only for nine months. So hence, here also, don't consider full, give nine by 12. Because that instrument was there in the last year only for nine months. So do not forget this. This is important. Okay, fine, because this instrument was only issued for nine months in the last year. Interest also you'll consider for nine months and the veins also you'll consider for nine months. Interest affects your issue no? and shares affect your veins. So both numerator and denominator may same weightage should be given. So that is nine by 12. Okay, sir. Hence, you'll get this is the number of uh, shares you'll get. So to, this is your dilution adjustment. Add it, you'll get the veins for diluted EPS purpose. So you have your issue also, you have your veins also, divide them, you'll get the diluted EPS. Same drama you do for current year as well. But the current year, no, there is no interest, uh, interest gamma, same, same dilution adjustment is you will be able to save the interest. So you take interest into one minus tax rate, fair value loss also you will save. So add it up. Okay. Whenever you're calculating debts, don't do nine by 12 over here. Like last year you did nine by 12 for wins. Don't do it for this year. Why? Sir, last year that instrument was there only for nine months. For the current year, that instrument is there for the whole year. No, that means you consider full year interest. Since you consider full year interest here, you don't have to do nine by 12. If you still want to show it, show it as 12 by 12. Don't or leave it. It's better. Okay. That's one thing over here. Fair enough, people. That is this particular question. Hmm? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your wonderful comments. Pa. Okay. For CMA course, our uh, team is looking into it. I'm not the right person to ask that, but still, I'll take it as a compliment. I'll move forward now, dude. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is done. Next question. On 31st December 20X7 and X8, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the issued share capital of entity consisted of 40 lakh ordinary shares of 25 each. It had granted an option. Option, just now we saw. You know that the options rate will not be given at market price. It will be given at lower than market price. Okay. So option means it has got con it has it has got converted into equity shares already. No, it will get converted in future. That means this is a POS. The moment POS is there, debt calculation becomes necessary. So entity has granted an option that gives holders the right to subscribe the shares between 20x6, 20y6 to y9. Somewhere in future, sir, you are in 27, 20X, 7X8. We're talking about Y6 and Y9. That means the next, next, next decade. Okay. We are in probably 2028. They're talking about 2039. Okay. So next 10 years may they want, they can buy the shares. It seems at 70 per share. They'll buy the shares in future, but the price will be fixed now only. So that many long they will issue, sir. Depends. Okay. They can. It's not that they can't, but generally no. Okay. But anyway, that I'll not go into that debate. Option outstanding as on 31st December was 6,30,000. So you have given about 6,30,000. Option to buy, if, if the option holders exercise the right, they can buy 6,30,000 shares using this option by paying 70 rupees on one share, like that. On one option, they can buy, buy on one share, they can buy by paying 60, 70 rupees and 6,30,000 shares they can buy. There were no grants lapse exercise during the year. 
profit after tax attributable to ordinary shareholders for both the years they have only given. So each they have only given is 5 lakh and 6 lakh. Okay. So each they have only given means basic EPS is very straightforward. No? Each they have only given 6 lakh, 5 lakh. So how much is the actual number of equity shares? 40 lakh. Both the years 40 lakh. So divide that you will get basic EPS. That is very straightforward. What you need to calculate now is your uh, diluted EPS. So diluted EPS how you will calculate? How this ordinary, the, how this options exercise or how will it impact your debts is? One. Has option got exercised already? No. Okay, when it gets exercised, it will become ordinary shares or it will become equity shares. Then you will consider it for a basic EPS calculation. But now, you would have issued this option at lower than, lesser than market price. So how can you tell? Check here. For the current year, we are in th we have to calculate basic and diluted EPS for X7 and X8 also. Okay. So when you are in 31st December 20X7, they are saying market price is 120. So the worth of the share is 120, but exercise price is only 70. That means you are issued at discount. Next year when you are calculating, the worth of the share price is 160, but exercise price is still 70. That means these shares are issued at discount for both the years. So since you have issued this option at discount, okay. Now what is that effect on discount is what we are trying to calculate through debts. The effect on discount on EPS is what we are trying to calculate on, through debts. So how to calculate? Simple. There are some formulas also or you can approach logic also. I say uses both. I feel the logic is better. Okay. Uh, simple one is, sir. How much money, how much the amount the company will receive? If the option holders exercise the option, how much money company will receive? 6,30,000 option they can buy by paying 30, 70 rupees. I think it's given here only way to calculate. 6,30,000 into 70. That means company will receive how much? 4 crore 41 lakh. Correct. Huh? So company will receive 4 crore 41 lakh if the option holders exercise full option. Now we are calculating for 20x7. What is the market price of the share on 20x7? 120. So the worth of one share is 120. Now if you have 4 crore 41 lakh with you, and if the worth of one share is 120 means, how many shares can you buy? If you have 4 crore 41 lakh with you, and if the market price is 120 means, how many shares can you buy? 4 crore 41 lakh divided by 120, which is what sir? 3 lakh 67,500. You should be able to buy only 3 lakh 67,500, correct? So the, compared to the money the company has, they should have issued only 3 lakh 67,500 shares. For the money that they are receiving, companies are receiving, they should have issued only 367,500 option. But how many options actually the company gave? 6 lakh 30,000. The worth of the option is only for the money that they have received, the company has should have issued only 367,500 shares, but they have issued 6,30,000 shares. That means how much extra option the company has issued? 6,30,000 minus 6, uh, 367,500. If you do that, you're going to get 262,500. Those options in a way are given for free. Those options are given for free. That's what, that's what we see as shares issued for nil consideration. Meaning you have issued the shares at discount. No, The discount, how many shares got issued at discount is what we are trying to calculate over here. Okay. So actually only 367,500 should have been should have been given, but the company gave 6,30,000 shares. So that means some extra shares have been given by the company at free of cost. That is nothing but 2,600,000. So, this we have to consider as a dilution adjustment for your dilute DPS wala calculation. Okay. Fair enough. So that's all. So this options you know, will have no impact on your uh, ish because this option will get exercised in future. When option get, get exercised in future, option holders will pay money also. So earnings also will increase, shares also again will increase. We are not talking about that. Since you these shares you give it for free now, you already know this data. Only this data is considered now for your diluted EPS or EPS for purpose. Okay. So this you will consider as diluted EPS, uh, a dilution adjustment. So what is each for your uh, uh, what is the each for your basic EPS purpose? Five lakh. Dilution adjustment here is zero. Okay. That means the each is still five lakh only. Okay. Excuse me, what is Wains? Wains is not 40 lakh shares. How many shares are issued for nil consideration? 2 lakh 60 to 500. Add this. So that means how much will be the number, sir? 5 lakh divided by 42 lakh 60 to 500. If you do, you're going to get my calculator showing 0 0.11, which is nothing but they've rounded it off to 12 pi or 0 0.1173. That is your diluted EPS. Same thing you'll have to do for the next year as well. Okay, next year when you come to it, same. How many options? 6 lakh 30,000. Now, second year, uh, I mean, I, what is the exercise price still? 70. That means how much money if the share of the option holders exercise the option means how much money company will receive? Same 4 crore 41 lakh or 4 crore 41 lakh. But now the market price of the share has become 160. The worth of one share is 160. Company has 4 lakh 41,000 with it. With 4 lakh 41,000, how many shares can you buy? If share price, uh, share, if the price of one share is 160 means how many shares can you buy? So 4 crore 41 lakh divided by 160 if you do, you're going to get 275, 625. Actually, you should have, you, should, you can buy only 2 lakh 75, 625 shares. But the company has issued 6,30,000 option. Okay. So they should have issued only 275, 625, but they've issued 630. That means how many shares are issued for nil consideration in the second year? 354, 375. This becomes your dilution adjustment of in the denominator for your 
डेप्स वाला कैलकुलेशन सो ईश इज स्टिल सेम सिक्स लैक ओनली दैट इज सेम सिक्स लैक ओनली डिवाइडेड बाई वॉट विल बी द डायल्यूशन एडजस्टमेंट डायल्यूशन एडजस्टमेंट विल बी वॉट इज द ईश फॉर बेसिक ईपीएस पर्पज और वॉट इज द वेन्स फॉर डायल्यूटेड ईपीएस पर्पज फॉर्टी लैक प्लस How many shares are issued for nil consideration? Three fifty four, three seventy five. That is your dilution adjustment, which you like. So if you do calculate this, you will get about fourteen paisa. That's the funda. Okay, that's how you calculate the diluted EPS in case of options. All right, sir. What if the option price is equal to market price, sir? Suppose they say option price. In that case, they'll only give one year data. Let's assume they only give one year data. Okay. So let's say they give only two zero X seven data. So market price is also 120, and if exercise price is also 120 means now you tell me is shares issued for nil consideration? Now if you plug in the same number, you will get zero. That means there is no dilution adjustment here. Okay, if shares are issued at market price, there is no dilution adjustment. Only if the shares are issued at lesser than market price, that means some shares in a way indirectly you are given for free. That you consider it as dilution adjustment and recalculate the EPS. That we are calling it as diluted EPS. Okay, all right. The next question then, if you have got it. <clears throat> An entity issues, <clears throat> excuse me, two thousand convertible bonds at the beginning of year one. Okay, the bonds have three year term. They are issued at the uh, par face value of thousand per bond. Okay, two thousand bond each ka face value is thousand. So that means probably twenty lakh gives the proceeds of twenty lakh. Interest is payable annually in years, in arrears. Arrears means you are paying at year end. Annual interest rate is six percent. This is actual interest rate, but we know we don't use all this. Yes, we use effective interest rate. Okay, let's see. Each bond is convertible at any time at the maturity of two fifty ordinary shares. So convertible bond. So that means these are your uh, POS instrument. So on one bond you will get two fifty shares. How many bonds you have? Two thousand bonds. So two thousand into two fifty, you do. I think you're going to get fifty thousand. So if you convert the bonds into equity shares, fifty thousand additional equity shares has to be given. The entity has an option to settle the principal amount of convertible bonds in shares or shares. Okay, the entity has an option. Okay, great. When the bonds are issued, the prevailing market interest rate without conversion option is nine percent. Oh, okay. I think this is your compound financial instrument, sir. Because you give normally the expectation in the market is on these bonds they expect an interest rate. market participants expect an interest rate of nine percent. But you are paying only six percent. Why? Because the company gave an extra biscuit that they will convert the shares. Okay, so they gave that extra goli of conversion. That's the reason uh, the investors are ready to accept a lower interest rate. Okay, so this is your compound financial instrument. You know how to do this accounting. So there will be equity portion also, financial liability portion also over here. Profit attributable to equity shareholders in is ten lakh. This is your uh, ish, and ordinary shares outstanding is twelve lakh. So one ten lakh divided by twelve lakh. If you do, you're going to get basic EPS. Now that is straight forward point eight eight three. So he, that's what you need to calculate over your Beps and Deps. Deps is straightforward. Convertible bond outstanding is two thousand. I think they told that initially only. Okay. Now we just need to calculate. But before that, first, sir, since this is a compound financial instrument, you have to shift. Uh, you have to uh, classify this into liability, financial liability, and equity. And interest, no sir, we will not book it at six percentage. We will have to book the interest rate at effective interest rate of nine percentage. That means first you have to do financial instrument wala accounting, then do the basic EPS wala calculation. Why? You'll see this here. So first, uh, these are generally these are optional, optionally convertible uh, bonds, right? So whenever there is optionally convertible bonds, we used to consider what, sir? Usually we consider the interest also, we consider the principal also. But whenever you're calculating EPS, no, sir, if the company has, if the company has an option to convert, if the company has an option to convert, let's say company has an option, uh, a, a, whether to convert or whether to give shares, because these are uh, the convert. I mean, the company totally has a choice over here. Either they can give equity shares and redeem these. Or pay cash and redeem this. The way they want to redeem is company ka choice, right? Normally, whenever company has a choice, how do we do accounting? We check what is company ka intention. If company has an intention to convert, right? Then we uh, the, uh, that means we'll only consider the interest portion. If the company, however, intention has to uh, or to redeem, that means you have to consider whenever to find out financial liability, you have to consider interest also. We have to consider financial liability also. But for India's thirty-three purpose, there is a small exception. Whenever the interest, uh, whenever company has this conversion option. You only you think, sir. You are calculating now the diluted EPS purpose. That means you want maximum dilution. So which gives the maximum dilution? If company issues more and more number of shares, then it will cause more dilution. Yes, no. Like simple maths. Each is let's say hundred. Dilute. Uh, let's say veins is fifty. That means what is the number you will get? Going to get two. Let's say each is fifty. This became seventy-five. How much will be this number? Hundred divided by seventy-five is how much? You're going to get one point three three. Yes, no. So the denominator, if it increases, means if denominator goes on increasing, means the EPS will go on reducing. Yes, no. So correct. 
So which gives the maximum dilution? When you're calculating diluted EPS, you'll go for that option which causes maximum dilution. In these cases, the, uh, the option which causes maximum dilution is when the company goes for what option? Conversion option. Okay. If company goes for conversion option, if the company converts these bonds into equity shares, that will lead to maximum dilution or maximum diluted EPS. Yes, no? So that's the reason you will make the same assumption. You will think that the company will convert this bond at the end of the year or whenever the company will convert this bond into equity shares, meaning they will not repay the principal in cash. They will repay the principal by issuing equity shares. So whenever you are calculating financial liability now, Okay, you will only consider the interest component. You will not consider the, the principal portion. Okay, you will only consider the interest portion because company for this purpose, you will think that the company is going to repay the principal not in cash, but through shares. Okay, so that's the reason you will only consider this because how do you find out financial liability in compound financial instrument? We already studied this. How do you find out financial liability? Present value of future cash flows. Future cash flow is nothing but your interest and principal. So in these sort of options, don't consider principal because the assumption is the company is not going to pay the principal in cash, but they will convert that principal or they will give this principal by issuing equity shares. Hence, consider only the interest portion. Okay, so the value of the instrument is 20 lakh. Actual interest you're paying is 6%. So the interest every year is 1 lakh 20,000. Interest is same every year and the instrument is for three years. So consider, sir, you will, how do you can calculate the financial liability? Present value of future cash flow is discounted at market rate. What is the market rate? 9%. So at 9% use the PVAF, you will get this much amount. So what is the instrument value? 20 lakh. Financial liability value is 3 lakh 3,755. Out of 20 lakh, if 3 lakh is financial liability means the balance will be what's up? The equity portion. On this financial liability, you have to do ACM accounting. You need to put up the ACM table. That's what I put up over here. And interest you will charge based on what? The, the market rate. In fact, we need a effective interest rate over here. Since there is no transaction cost, market rate and effective interest rate will be same. So in this case, you will book the interest at 9% itself. This is the interest. And this is what I need, sir. Why, sir? Sir, if you convert this bonds into equity shares, you will save interest. We in this, in these sort of problems, we don't make the you don't book actual payment as interest. You interest accounting is done based on EIR. So that means this is the interest that you will save if you convert this instrument into equity shares. So this is your dilution adjustment. Interest saving is this. That's the reason ACM table and doing all this harkate or extra affair is necessary. Okay. One is this. Now it becomes very straightforward. You, how do you calculate depths now? Take each. Okay. How much is each for basic EPS purpose? They already gave, which is 10 lakh. So to this, you add dilution adjustment. What is dilution adjustment? Savings in interest. What is the interest save, sir? If you convert this bonds into equity shares today, okay, this interest you need not pay anymore. That means this will be the interest. So why have you not interest into why have you not done interest into one minus tax rate? Why have you taken directly interest? Because tax rate in the problem they have not given. Sir. If you don't see any tax rate in the problem, don't assume thirty percent and all. If tax rate is missing, don't bring in the tax funda at all. Only if tax rate is given, then only do interest into one minus tax rate. If tax rate is not given, ignore the tax portion. Okay. So take the entire interest portion there. All right. Then denominator me. What is the veins for basic EPS purpose? Twelve lakh. Then. What is a, a dilution adjustment? Sir, if you convert this bond, on one bond, you need to give 250 shares. How many bonds we have? 2,000 bonds. On one bond, 250 shares. On 2,000 bonds, how much? 2,000 into 250, which is nothing but 50,000 or 5 lakh. Okay, that's what we got. That is your dilution adjustment. If you do this, you're going to get 0.60. So your basic EPS was how much? 0.883. And your diluted EPS is 0 0.60. So from 0 0.8, it has become 0 0.6. So it has reduced. Hence the name diluted EPS. Diluted EPS means reduction in EPS due to this POS instrument. Yes, sir, sir. Okay. Sir, can diluted EPS be more than basic EPS, sir? It can be. We call that scenario as anti-dilutive and anti-dilutive EPS, we don't report it. What to do in that case? We have some problems. I'll take care. I mean, at the, in future, I mean, but in few minutes, we'll cover that also. Okay. All right. Uh, next is maybe we'll take up this question. Question number 18. We have done a lot of questions in this uh, chapter uh, in our regular class. But unfortunately, I don't have time to go through everything. At least I would like to do some seven, eight questions, which I feel personally is important. I'll quickly run by. You. Okay. All right. Because this one topic where no, sir, theory will not help you. The more and more numbers you solve, no, that, that's it. Because this is an out and out uh, number, practical. Matlab, the more and more questions you solve in this topic, the better, the more, and, the better, in fact, you will feel about this. Okay. Uh, sir, they have given, you need to calculate EPS under three, I mean, they have given three years per data, X0, X1, X2, profit attributable to equity shareholders of the parent entity they have given. Okay, great. Uh, shares outstanding before the rights issue. Okay, there's a rights issue, uh, rights issue wala problem. So the moment they give you rights wala problem, always think that rights shares are not issued at market price. They're issued at a lesser than market price. That means what, sir? 
right shares also has an element of bonus so whatever you do for bonus for more right shares also you need to do keep that in mind okay so now before right shares the company had 500 shares and right shares is given as what sir one new right shares for five shares outstanding if you have five shares the shareholders are eligible to buy one right shares more so we have 500 okay if you have five you will buy one if you have 500 how many so 100 right shares additionally the shareholders are eligible to buy right shares is an option the shareholders if they want they can exercise this option and buy 100 extra shares otherwise they can reject also the choice is totally with the company itself okay oh uh, yeah seeing the time right huh? Oh, yeah, it is. All right, exercise price is 5 rupees. So, obviously, right shares are not given at free of cost. Right shareholders has to pay some money. The money payable on one share is 5 rupees. Great. The date of rights issue was 1st January. Last day to exercise the right shares is 1st March. If shareholders want to buy the right shares, they have to decide by 1st March only. Okay, fine. The market price of one ordinary share is immediately before exercise of right is 11 rupees. This only we call it as come right price per share. Come right price per share. Basically, the market value of the share before the rights issue. Fancy name, come right price per share, we say. Reporting date is 31st December. So, here, Jan to December is what is our reporting period. So, you need to calculate basic in EPS, not just for one year, but all the three years. Okay, let's quickly run this by. So, we use formula approach itself. One, uh, what is that, sir? First, we need to calculate something called theoretical X right price per share. That is nothing but your average price. Okay. So, first, we will calculate it for the, right, the year in which you gave the rights issue. When did you issue the rights issue? Rights issue came in uh, 20 x one So first we need to calculate it for 20 x one Then we will do for the other years. Okay. So first calculate theoretical X right price per share. How do you get that? Value of old shares. How many old shares you had? 500. And the value of each share before the rights issue was how much? 11. So 500 into 11 you do. Plus what? Sir? Value of right shares. How many right shares can you buy? 100. At what price can you buy right shares? 5 rupees. One share ka value is 5 rupees. 100 shares ka value how much? Into 100 into 5. So basically 500 into 11 plus 100 into 5. If you do this, you're going to get total value of the shares divided by total number of shares How, uh, divided, that is given by original shares plus number of right shares if you do that you're going to get total number of shares if you do this you're going to get theoretical x right price per share is 10 so what did i say as per the books after the rights issue the price of the share should, will fall before the rights issue what is the price of the share 11 now what are you getting 10 so you're getting a number lower than 11 that means you're going in the right direction you can check like that another one is adjustment factor how do you calculate adjustment factor a uh, number in the numerator has to be greater than number in the denominator because adjustment factor should give you or should be greater than one. So what is it? Which will be greater? Value of the shares before the rights issue will be greater, right? That only we call it as come right price per share. So adjustment factor is given by the formula come right price per share divided by theoretical x right price per share. So basically 11 divided by 10. That is your adjustment factor. If you want, you can keep it in fraction or if you want, you can take it in decimal. That is your choice. So 11 divided by 10, if you do, in fact, you're going to get a uh, 1.1. So that means you're getting a number greater than one. So again, you're going in the right direction because adjustment factor means it, we're talking about bonus element. So one share is what not worth one now. One share is worth more than one. There is an element of bonus included. Hence, adjustment factor should be greater than one, we say. Now we need to calculate one, sir. Wains. Don't say diluted EPS enough. Sir, right shares have actually happened. Okay. So whatever shares have actually got converted, that forms part of your basic EPS wala calculation. Diluted EPS will only come into picture for POS. POS means these instruments will get converted into equity shares later years, not now. So here we don't have any POS instrument. So diluted EPS and all is not necessary. Okay. All right. So how do you get wains over here, sir, for the current year? As I told you, this is an, uh, the adjustment factor is a uh, bonus element. No. So you need to multiply uh, to the original shares. What are the original shares? 500. So 500 into adjustment factor, you either you can express it in or you can like write like this 500 into 1.1. Okay. I'll do cumulative approach. Sir, year starts on January. When did you come up with rights issue? Or what is the last day for the rights issue? March. That means January, February. For two months, the company had 500 shares. After that, it changed. That means I'll write into 2 by 1. Okay. There afterwards, how many right shares the company gave? 100. That means from 500, number of shares will become 600. Into what, sir? The remaining months, which is 10 by 12. So if you do this, the final number you're going to get is 592. If you work this out, you're going to get 592. That is your weights. So you have your ish also. Okay, I think each for 2 x one they only given, which is 1,500. So, 1,500 divided by 592, if you do, you're going to get basic EPS for 2 x one which is 2.54. That is one. Okay. Now, one more factor is, whenever there is a rights issue, right shares includes a bonus element. That is nothing but your bonus uh, adjustment factor 1.1. So, whenever there is bonus element, previous year ka EPS, you need to restate. So, rights issue came in this year. So, previous year is 2 x zero. So, you need to multiply this adjustment factor. Adjustment factor means it includes bonus. That 0.1. Here you're getting no one, it's not one, it's point one point one you're getting. So you're getting that extra point one. That extra point one represents your bonus element. Okay. So you need to multiply it to the previous year ka 
uh, uh, each, I mean, veins also. Okay. So previous year ka, uh, let's calculate previous year ka veins as well, which is x zero. How do you calculate that? So how many shares you had in the previous year? Five hundred. Into what? Multiply adjustment factor, which is one point one. Right. So then all don't that didn't come in the last year. Okay. Only bonus issue came. So yes, no. Meaning the only bonus ka restatement is necessary. Right. Shares ka restatement is not necessary. Okay. So you, you do five hundred into one point one. If you want, you can write into twelve by twelve because these five hundred shares were there in the last year for whole year. No. Rights came only in the current year. So hence we have to consider the source. All right. So current last year there was no no rights, but since rights has an element of bonus, so restatement of previous year becomes necessary. So hence you can write twelve by twelve or ignore your call. So if you do that, you're going to get six hundred. So six hundred is the in fact six hundred. What is that? Same. Five hundred into one point one is how much? Five hundred and fifty. So range for the last year is five hundred and fifty. Here each is how much? Thousand one hundred. Each is thousand one hundred. Wayne's is five hundred and fifty. If you do that, you're going to get restated basic EPS is two rupees. Okay. Then they have given next year data also. So next year also you need to calculate. Next year there is no drama, right? So all is over, no. That means now, how many shares does the company have in two zero x two? They had five hundred previously. They gave hundred shares already. Last year only they given right shares. That means the number of shares the company has is six hundred. Okay. So the each for the last year is eight hundred. And the wins for the next year is six hundred rupees. So thousand eight hundred divided by six hundred. If you do, you're going to get basic EPS of three rupees for the next year, like that. Okay. So that so don't say again. I'll multiply adjustment factor to this also. Restatement is only for the previous year, not for the next year. Why do we restate this? When you prepare current year financial statement, we also have to give previous year ka data for comparison purpose. So if you don't restate, it lead to very distorted number. That's the reason restatement becomes a necessary. Next year again and all, no restatement necessary. Take the actual number and do the working. All right. Next, calculate subsidiary ka uh, group uh, subsidiaries and groups basic EPS and diluted EPS. So that means this is your consolidated financial statement we are working. Till now we were doing it with SFS level. Now we are doing it at SFS and CFS level. Both we need to calculate. Okay. So let's look at this. Profit first they have given parent ka data, then they have given subsidiary ka data. Let's work with first subsidiary ka data. Profit, sir. Whenever they give profit in the problem, it always means profit after tax. Generally, in these sort of problems, just a convention, no logic. Okay. Generally, when we say profit, it means profit after tax hmm? because whatever SPL you show is also profit after tax. That's the that's the reason this is used generally as a convention. So profit after tax is five thousand four hundred. Sir, is profit after tax uh, your earning is each? No. Profit after tax could be each provided there is no preference dividend etc etc. So we need to cross check. It could be or it may not be also. Uh, ordinary shares outstanding is thousand. Okay, warrants they have given. Warrants is what, sir? They may get converted into equity shares in future. That means this is a POS. Okay, one fifty warrants are there, and we know this. This warrants will not be issued at market price. They will they will be issued at lesser than market price. That means there will be some warrants which will be issued for nil consideration, which we need to calculate it and take its effect into diluted EPS. Okay, all right. Uh, exerciseable to purchase ordinary shares. Yes, we know. Exercise price they have given it as ten. Great. Average market price was twenty. Oh, see here only. Price was twenty. Market price is twenty, but exercise price is only ten. I mean, it's almost fifty percent discount they've got now. So hence, there is a definitely depths we need to calculate. Okay, in this particular case, convertible preference shares also we have. Convertible preference shares means that is again POS because it will get converted into equity shares in future. So how many such we have? Sir? We have four hundred convertible preference shares, each convertible into one ordinary shares. Okay, on one preference shares you will get one equity shares, and we have four hundred preference shares. So that means how many equity shares will you get? You'll get four hundred equity shares. Okay, dividend on preference shares is one rupee. Okay, sir. Sir, this is a convertible preference shares. Convertible preference shares means we will not classify it as financial liability. We'll classify it as equity because fixed to fixed test is satisfied. How many shares you are? How much money you receive from convertible preference shares? You know. How many shares equity shares? How many equity shares you'll give also? You know. So fixed to fixed test is satisfied. So you'll classify this as an equity. Correct. So if preference shares are classified as equity, sir, preference dividend you'll deduct off. Oh, no, that depends. If it is a cumulative preference shares, then you will deduct the dividend whether it is declared or not. However, if it is non-cumulative preference shares, then we will deduct it only if it is declared. Here, what happened? Check dividend on preference shares is one rupees. That means they have declared the dividend. If they have declared the dividend, you have to deduct it. So that means what will be the each for basic EPS working, sir? You can't take five thousand four hundred. Five thousand four hundred is profit after tax. From that, deduct the dividend, and you'll get what? Five thousand. Okay. Divided by what? What is actual number of uh, shares the company has? Thousand. They have from the beginning, so no need to do any weight wala drama. Even if you want to assign weight, you'll write thousand into twelve by twelve, which is irrelevant, not required. So that means uh, your, excuse me, wins for basic EPS calculation is thousand. So five thousand divided by one thousand. If you do, you're going to get basic EPS of five rupees per share. Okay, that's your BEPS of a subsidiary company. 
Next, we need to calculate depths. We have option. First, we'll calculate how many options are issued for nil consideration. I think I've put it over here. So how many options have been issued? 150. What is the exercise price? 10. I think you can write it in one line also like this. Okay. 150 options you have issued into 10 rupees. If you do that, what it will be? 1500. So if you have 1500 rupees with you, what is the market price of each share? 20. So divided by 20 you do. How many options can you buy? On one share, the option holders are giving 10 rupees. 150 options they can buy. So totally 1500 rupees company will get. And the market price of one share is 20 rupees. So divided by 20 if you do means it will be 75. Correct? No. That means ideally only 75 options should have been given. But the company gave an option of 150. That means what's 75 shares are issued for nil consideration. Like this you can calculate in one line also. Or you can put it up words like this until proceeds is 1500. How many options that should have been issued? That is nothing but 1500 divided by current market price which is 75. How many options have actually been issued? 150. So only 75 should have been issued but we issued 150. So that means options issued for nil consideration is 75. Either present it like this or you can directly do it like this also. Your choice. Okay. So base, but basically do it properly. Okay. Okay. Next is what's the dilute DPS. First consider dilute DPS is not a separate working. Take first the the each for uh, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> Take the each for your basic EPS purpose. What is the each for basic EPS purpose? 5000, which we have taken. To that, you add dilution adjustment. For options, is there any dilution adjustment? No, no, no. Options have been issued for nil consideration. That's all. So there is no impact on numerator. There is only impact on the denominator. So plus zero if you want, you can write here. There's a dilution adjustment related to option, which is none. Okay. Divided by what, sir? Take the veins for basic EPS. What is the basic EPS ka veins? 1000. To that, you add dilution adjustment. Did you issue any options for nil consideration? Yes. How much is that? 75. That is 50%, can I say? 150 options were there in that 75 50%. 1, 150 50% is 75. That's what I've called out over here also. Basically, 50% of the options are issued for nil consideration. Can I make that statement? Because total option is 150. Number of options issued for nil consideration is 75. So almost almost Allah, 50% of options are issued for nil consideration. So that we have written. Okay, sir. Then what? Is this only instrument? Huh? No. We have one more, which is what? We have one more PS in the viewers in the form of convertible preference shares. So if you convert preference shares into equity shares today. Then should you have to pay any dividend? No. How much dividend can you save? What is the dividend on preference shares? 400. That you can save. So add 400 to the numerator because earnings attributable to equity shareholders will increase if there is no preference dividend. That is your numerator impact. Denominator impact will be if you convert preference shares into equity shares, you have to issue more equity shares. On one preference shares, you give one equity shares. On 400 preference shares, how many equity shares will you give? Another 400. So if you add this, that is much. So this is your dilution adjustment. If you do this, you're going to get Diluted EPS to be 3.66. Basic EPS was 5. Diluted EPS has reduced and it has become 3.66. Like, okay. This is about subsidiary card. Done. Next is about the parent. Parent card drama. Parent, what did they ask? First, let's look at the parent data. How much profit attributable to equity shareholders is there? 12,000. How many ordinary shares are outstanding? 800. Okay. Now check instrument of subsidiary owned by the parent. Subsidiary card instrument, parent owns 800 ordinary shares. So ordinary shares means equity shares. Out of uh, how many equity shares does a subsidiary company have in totality? 800. Out of 800, parent owns, uh, out of 1000 in fact here, 1000. Out of 1000, parent owns 800. That means 80% can I say? 800 divided by 1000, which is 80%. Okay. Oh, that's the reason it's a parent subsidiary or a relationship. Because with 80%, definitely you do get the control. Not only that, even 30 warrants exercisable to purchase ordinary shares. Subsidiary company had some warrants. Now, how many warrants totally? 150. In, that one, in this 150 warrants, 30 warrants parent only has. So they are owning warrants also. And they are owning convertible preference shares also. How many convertible preference shares subsidiary had? 400. Out of that 400, 300 parent only owns. Okay, like this. So you keeping this in mind. First you check. Tell me sir. Is there any POS which is issued by the parent? Has parent company issued any potential ordinary shares? No. Okay, they have only subscribed. They have subscribed for POS but they have not issued any POS. Keep that in mind. Okay, first let's calculate the parent ka basic EPS. How do you calculate basic EPS? Earning attributable to equity shareholders divided by weighted average number of equity shares. Weighted average number of equity shares is very straightforward, which is 10,000. Clearly given in the problem. Correct, no? Now only thing you need to calculate is what, sir? Each. How do you get each? Each is given in the problem, which is what? 12,000. Straight away you can't take 12,000 divided by 10,000. Why, sir? Sir, it's a parent company, no? Right? Parent has a control over subsidiary company. So if subsidiary company has any earnings means a part of that earnings parent also will get, no sir? If subsidiary has any earnings, a part of that parent also will get, yes. So what was the earnings of the, what was the each of the parent? Uh, in fact, of subsidiary company. What was the each of the subsidiary company? 5,000 rupees, correct no here? That's what we've calculated here. 
So earnings of subsidiary company is 5,000 and this is the earnings attributable to equity shareholder and parent is also an equity shareholder and parent owns how much percentage in subsidiary company? 80%. That means you have to do what? In this 5,000, 80% belongs to the parent. Like this you can calculate or you can calculate another way also. What is the basic EPS on of uh, subsidiary company? 5 rupees. On one share, 5 rupees. How many shares does the parent own? 800. So 800 into 5, 4,000. Like that also you can calculate. I think this is easy. We can take this. Okay. Subsidiary earnings is earnings attributable to equity shareholder is 5,000. Parent owns 80%. So multiply 80%. You get this. Okay, sir. That is one. Only that. Uh, no, no, no. Parent also owns preference shares. If they own preference shares and a subsidiary company declared any dividend, yeah. They have declared a dividend of 1 rupee. On one, one preference shares, they declared a dividend of 1 rupee. They only told in the problem here. Yes. How many preference shares does parent own? 300. On one share, 1 rupee dividend. On 300 shares, how much dividend? 300 into 1, which is 300. So this is the earnings attributable to equity shareholders for the group. We are calculating with the group, no? So this will be your numerator. So cal with this, if you calculate, you're going to get the basic EPS of 1.63. So keep that in mind. Okay. All right. Next is diluted EPS. Diluted EPS, you need to be a little extra careful. One, sir. Now, sir, before this, you know, in fact, currently you tell me what is the shareholding percentage? Subsidiary company has 1,000 shares. In that, 800 equity shares the parent owns. That means the shareholding percentage is 80%. Correct. Now, how are you calculating debts? What is the intention or thought process behind debts? If you convert the potential ordinary shares into equity shares today, then what will happen to EPS is what you are trying to give out or call out. Yes, no. Now, sir, if you convert preference shares, if you convert the POS into equity shares, will the parent ka shareholding percentage be same? Huh? After POS gets converted, will parent ka percentage be same? No, no. POS is held by not only parent, by others also. No? That means this percentage could be 80, it could be more than 80 or it could be less than 80. First, let's calculate that. If this potential ordinary shares gets converted into equity shares today, then what will be the shareholding percentage of the parent? Okay. First is this. Currently, subsidiary company has 1000 shares. In that 800 shares, parent only owns. So that is pretty straightforward. Correct. Now, I'll give a corresponding number in the numerator and denominator. Correspondingly, we'll compare so that it will be easier. So, subsidiary company has 1000 equity shares and in that 800 parent owns. Okay. Now check, sir, how many warrants the subsidiary company has issued? 150. Sir, entire 150, did you calculate for debts purpose? No, 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 no. For debts purpose, we only calculated, we took 75. And what is the percentage? 50%. Yes or no? Because only for debts, no, sir, we are only considering what? Those options which are issued for nil consideration, which is what, sir? 75. So you will consider 75? Correct? 75. Parent owns how much of those warrants? 30. Sir, entire 30 can you consider? Huh? Sir, entire 150 did you consider in the denominator only 50%? Only 50%. Why? Because only 50% was issued for nil consideration. So, entire 30 can you consider the numerator? Huh? No, only 50%. So, calculate 30 ka 50%. That's the reason I told the percentage over here. Okay. 50% of the warrants are issued for nil consideration. So, in the denominator, if you have considered 50%, 75 means in the numerator also you should consider only 50%. Hence, 30 ka 50% you do. That is this number. Okay. So, this is about warrants. One more is there, which is what? Preference shares. How many preference shares totally subsidiary company has? 400. In this 400, how much parent owns? They only told parent owns, own about 300. So in this 400, parent owns about uh, 300 rupees. So take these in the numerator, this in the denominator and calculate the revised shareholding percentage, which will be what? 75.59 percentage. So if this POS gets converted into equity shares today, then the percentage will be 75.59 percentage. We'll use this data to calculate dilute APS. How's that? Sir, what is the each for basic EPS purpose? 12,000. In fact, this runs slightly differently. We'll take 12,000 over here. Only parent. Because subsidiary ka, we'll have to do separate calculation over here. Parent ka, what is the each, sir? 12,000 rupees. Now, what was the diluted EPS? Oh, you have already calculated sub subsidiary company ka diluted EPS. Okay. What was the each for a diluted EPS purpose? 5,400. Correct? No? The each that you considered for diluted EPS is 5,400. Correct? This is what you considered. So entire 5,400 belongs to the parent. Ah, no, this 5,400 is considering all the instrument. Correct? No. How did you get 5,400? By considering equity shares, options, ka, preference shares, ka, everything. Everything has been put together already. No? By considering all of that, the earnings is 5,400. Yes. No? So again, you should not consider uh, POS instrument. This 5,400 considers full. So 5,400 is the subsidiary ka total earnings for diluted APS purpose. Parent owns 100 percent, ah, no, the revised percentage only 75.59 percentage. So take subsidiary ka diluted EPS, mm -hmm. take subsidiary ka 
each which you use for your diluted eps purpose which is 5400 and multiply the revised shareholding percentage what is it is not plus this is multiplication multiply the revised shareholding percentage which is 75.59 percentage so this is the dilution adjustment 5400 75.59 percentage if you do you're going to get 4081 to that if you add 12000 you're going to my calculator is showing 16081.86 that is your e issue for diluted eps purpose of the group divided by what weighted average number of equity shares that is still 10000 why sir parent has not issued any pos that means what this will still be 12000 only so diluted eps of the group will become 1.61 basic eps was 1.63 diluted eps has become 1.61 always check up diluted eps cannot be greater than basic eps make it a point to check always this is 1.63 this is 1.61 okay sir all right, I'll just give you a quick walkthrough of this once again. All right, this could be an important problem, but easy only. Just remember the steps once again. First is what, sir? Uh, sub subsidiary card data, I think, is very straightforward, correct? No? So, uh, ba basic EPS of the group is also very straightforward. Take the earnings which they've given for parent, and to that you add what, sir? Subsidiary card earnings. Uh, subsidiary company declared preference dividend of 1 rupee. Parent owns 300 preference shares, so add 300 to that. Then, subsidiary company has an e shop earnings attributable equity shareholders of 5,000. Parent owns 80% of subsidiary company. So take 5,000 to 80%. Divided by Wayne's is 10,000 clearly given. So that is one. But when you are calculating diluted EPS, be a little careful. First take the, first find out the revised shareholding percentage. Because there are POS instrument. If this POS gets converted, what will happen? Shareholding percentage may change. First calculate that. It's the same number. Three instrument you need to consider. Equity shares, preference shares, warrants. Correspondingly, go on putting the num number. How many equity shares does a subsidiary company have? 1,000. In this, how many, how many shares the parent owns? 800. That is one. Plus, how many warrants did you consider for diluted APS purpose? Though subsidiary has 150, only 50% are issued for nil consideration. Hence, you consider 75. Parent owns how many options? 30. Entire 30 can you consider? No, only 50%. So, 30 ka 50%. That is one. Then, how many preference shares, convertible preference shares subsidiary company has? 400. In that, how much parent owns? 300. Consider that. The revised shareholding percentage will be 75.59 percentage. Okay. So, basically, 75% of the diluted EPS belongs to the parent okay? or 75 percent of the earnings of the uh, subsidiary company belongs to the parent. What was the each earnings attributable to equity shareholders that you took for your diluted EPS purpose? When you calculated subsidiary card diluted EPS, the each that you took was 5400. This is after considering every instrument, equity shares, POS, all. So each was 5400. Subsidy parent ka, what is the shareholding percentage now? 75%. That means parent will have 75% right over this. So take 5400 and multiply 75%. You'll get parent ka share. This is usual. And divided by veins. Veins that has not changed because parent does not have any POS on the row. So still you'll take 12,000. That will give you group ka depths. Hmm? Okay. Awesome G. Next G. Next is contingently issuable shares. Contingently issuable shares means sir, you will issue the shares provided certain events are satisfied. Certain contingencies are satisfied. Like you will say, we will issue the shares provided EPS increases by 10%. Earnings increases by 40 lakhs. Okay, market price increases by 40%. Like that. Okay. So, if you put, you put some condition, if those conditions are satisfied, you will issue the shares. Otherwise, you will not issue the shares. Hence the name contingently issuable shares. Hmm? Or in class form, we used to call this a CIS. Okay. So for basic EPS purpose, you will consider the CIS when the conditions get satisfied. For diluted EPS purpose, you will consider it. You will consider it only if the conditions are satisfied, but you will not assign any weights. You will consider the full. Okay. That is one. So let's go ahead with this. Ordinary shares outstanding is 10 lakh. There were no options and all that they are saying. So no POS are there. Okay. At agreement, an, uh, an agreement related to business combination provides for the issue of additional ordinary shares based on following condition. So one business combination has happened due to this CIS shares have been issued, contingently issuable shares have been issued. 5,000 additional ordinary shares for each retail site open in 20X1. So if you open one retail outlet, 5 additional shares will be issued. If you open 10 retail outlets, 5,000 into 10, 50,000 shares will be given like that. And 1,000 additional ordinary shares, 1,000 shares you will give. Okay, for each 1,000 rupees of consolidated profit in excess of 20 lakh. So, if the consolidated profit crosses 20 lakh, for each 1000 rupees it crosses, okay, if the profit crosses, uh, I mean, if you if you're getting means, they, uh, I mean, for 1000 rupees excess profit, you will issue 1000 shares, that's what they're saying. The profit should cross 20 lakh. Suppose the profit becomes 21 lakh, the threshold is 20 lakh, correct? How much has it crossed by? 1 lakh. 
sir if the profit crosses 1000 rupees means you will issue 1000 shares your profit is cost by 1 lakh rupees so then how many shares like that like that they have ratio they have defined hmm? if the profit exceeds 1000 rupees if uh, let me read that line again for 1000 additional shares of rupees 1000 of uh, each for rupee 1000 uh, additional shares for each rupees 1000 of consolidated profit in excess of 20 lakh rupees if consolidated profit exceed 20 lakh then only you will give shares how many shares 1000 shares you will issue for if the profit excess exceeds by 1000 rupees means you will issue 1000 shares if profit exceeds, exceeds by 5 lakh means how much it will be 5 lakh shares like that okay so that means there are two conditions over here one is a profit condition other one is a retail outlet wala condition okay Retail sites opened during the year is one in 1st May, another one you opened in 1st September. So, two retail sites you have opened. So, okay, we'll, we'll see. I think this, I think for the year ended 31st December, they've clearly given away. So, Jan to December is a year, year, year into that, talking about it here. Consolidated year to date profit they've given attributable to ordinary shareholders. So, they've given consolidated profit. Great. For uh, 11 lakh as of 31st March 2021. So, they've given quarter wise data over here. Quarter one, it is 11 lakh. Quarter number two, it is 23 lakh. This is consolidated profit. Okay. So total profit for Q2 is 23 lakh. Then for Q3, it has become 19 lakh. So it is reduced from 23, it has become 19 lakh because you did some loss. Okay. There's some discontinued operations and all. Probably you suffered a loss. Again, from 19 lakh, it became 29 lakh in the fourth quarter. So quarter on quarter, they've given. You need to calculate debts and debts. Okay. So first, let's calculate the basic EPS. So since they've given quarter wise data, so calculate it. You also calculate it quarter wise as well as for the whole year. So four quarters ka data we'll have and then the full year. What is first quarter ka consolidated profit? Uh, profit 1 lakh because we, we don't want consolidated profit. No? Each quarter ka profit we want. Using that we will calculate each quarter ka EPS. Basic and diluted EPS. So first quarter ka profit is 11 lakh. Second quarter ka consolidated profit is 23. So from 11 it became 23 means how much profit increased in the second quarter. Or what is the profit for the second quarter? 23 minus 11 which is 12. Then from 23 lakh consolidated profit became 19 lakh in the next year. That means third quarter you made a loss of 4 lakh. Then from 19 lakh, it became 29 lakh. So we made a profit of 10 lakh. Okay. So full year, it is 29 lakh. This is one. So how many ordinary shares is outstanding? They only told 10 lakh. Sir, did you, oh, there was some con CIS, right? Meaning some contingency. Was any contingency satisfied? Yeah. One, they told if you open a retail outlet, for one retail outlet, outlet open, 5,000 shares will be issued. Did you open any retail outlet? Yes. You opened it in May. First quarter ends on March. First quarter is giant to March. Then it is April, May, June. Then it is July, August, September. Then it is October, November, December. So where did you open? So you opened it in May. So that means it comes here. April, May, June. You opened on 1st May. Correct. Now you are doing quarterly wise data. So can you put entire 5,000? No, no, no. We are working with quarterly data. So normally when you are working with yearly data, so the weights you will assign is 1 by 12, 2 by 12, 3 by 12, 9 by 12, 12 by 12, etc. The weight you will assign it in 12. You are working with quarterly data. So how many quarters, how many months are there in the quarter? Three months. Okay. So there are the three months in this particular quarter. It starts from April, May, June. You opened the outlet only in May. That means this outlet was there only for two months, May and June of this quarter. That means you will assign two by three. 5,000 into two by three, which becomes triple three. Like this. So in the second X quarter again, we opened the next uh, retail outlet in September. That is July, August, September. Okay. So did you open one more? Yeah. 5,000 was already opened. That 5,000 was there in the whole quarter. No. So you write 5,000 into three by three. This 5,000 came in the previous quarter. It's already opened. So you write 5,000 into three by three. One more you opened in September and the quarter ends on December. First September you opened and the quarter ends on 30th September. So how many months these are there? Only one month in the quarter. Don't do one by 12. We are doing quarterly calculation here. So you have to do one by three, 5,000 into one by three. That will give you, if you sum up these two, you're going to get six, tri uh, triple six, seven. Next fourth quarter, may did you open anything? No. You already opened two outlets uh, in the previous quarters only, you know. They are already there. So you'll do 5,000 plus 5,000, it will be 10,000. Okay. Now for the yearly, what it will be? For the yearly also, if you calculate it, now you have to assign the weights in uh, years. Okay. So when did you open this quarter? Now, no, don't do quarterly data, yearly data. You opened it in May. So May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So this first outlet was there for 8 months. So 5,000 into 8 by 12. Did you. Then second one you opened in September, right? So September, October, November, December. So you will do 5,000 into 4 by 12. So if you do that, 5,000 into 8 by 12, that gives you triple 3, triple 3. 5,000 into 4 by 12, that will give you 1, 0, 5,000 into 4 divided by 12, that will give you 1667. So, triple 3 plus 1667 will give you 5,000 rupees. That's what they have shown here somewhere as 8. Okay, that's for the early data. Okay. So, there's about retail contingency. There is one more contingency called earnings. Sir, what they told is, it's a condition is what? It is not quarter profit. You will give extra shares based on earnings, but the earnings should be based on consolidated profit. Consolidated profit for the year ended 31st December. 
if consolidated profit for the year ended crosses 20 lakh then only you will get correct no sir that means this particular condition no sir you'll you'll get to know whether it is satisfied or not only at the end of the year because you will get to know the consolidated they only saying consolidated profit for the year ended uh, 31st december if it crosses 20 lakh so only when the year ended when the year when the full year ends then only you will get full consolidated profit that you will check whether it whether, whether has it crossed only then the condition will be satisfied so condition will get satisfied at the end of the year on the last day of the year so means condition will get satisfied at the end of the year means what weight can you assign no weights that means hence this will not be considered for your basic eps purpose Con they are satisfied but they are satisfied only at the year end since they are satisfied at the year end you can't assign any weights so you have to write zero then okay if it was satisfied at least for one month i would have written one by twelve it got satisfied at the year end on the last day so you have to write zero by twelve which will be zero that's the reason it is ignored okay so do this you'll get this is your eps again so if you add this you're going to get the the veins for basic EPS purpose. So each you already got it here. So this divided by this will give you basic EPS respectively. Okay, sir. That is one. This is your basic EPS. Next is your diluted EPS while working. Same quarterly profit you take. That is the same. Then uh, veins also for basic EPS purpose. Same thing you have copied. Now, sir, diluted EPS ka CIS arrangement is very, very simple. Don't bother about the weights. If condition is satisfied, means give the full thing. Okay, if condition is satisfied means don't bother about the weights, give it in full because we are talking about maximum dilution here. That's the reason. Okay, did you open any retail outlet in the first quarter? No. I mean, should any shares come? No. Did you open any retail outlet in the second quarter? Yes. Don't even bother about the weight. Give 5,000 shares. Because if you open any retail outlet, how many shares will be issued? 5,000. So take entire 5,000. Did you open any retail outlet in the third quarter? Yes, you opened one more. I mean, in the last quarter, you opened one. So we'll give 5,000. Now also you open one, you'll give further 5,000. So that means it'll become 5,000 plus 5,000, 10,000. Next quarter, you did not open any, but previously you already opened two. So it'll be 10,000. Year date also, it'll be 1,000 or 10,000. Okay. This is about retail wala contingency. No weight wala drama. Take it as it is and dump it. Okay. Next is earning contingency. I'll link. So check, sir. Earning condition, you're calculating the maximum dilution over here. So here we need to be, uh, we, we need to, how, how we need to, how the working works is, if the current period, how diluted EPS works for CIS in this earning contingency relationship is, if current period was the end of the contingency period, if you, if you, let's say in the first quarter, if first quarter was the end of the contingency period, means if the condition is satisfied, give full shares. If the condition is not satisfied, give no shares like that. If current period was the end of the contingency period, then how many shares will be issued? Think on those lines and uh, get the shares. So in the first quarter, the profit was only 11 lakh. But to for you to issue shares based on earning contingency, profit should cross 20 lakh. That's what they say. Consolidated profit should be in excess of 20 lakh. Did it cross 20 lakh in the first quarter? No. I mean, condition failed. So leave it off. Second quarter, sir, 11 lakh plus 12 lakh. So the profit is what? In fact, they only given. Second quarter ka consolidated profit is 23 lakh. Second quarter ka put together consolidated profit is 23 lakhs. Did it cross 20 lakh? Yes. It crossed 20 lakh by how much? 3 lakh. Yes, no. Yes. So what did they say in the problem? You will give 1000 additional shares provided profit exceeds by 1000 rupees. Here profit exceeded by 1000 rupees. I know it exceeded by 3 lakh rupees. How 3 lakh? You got 23 lakh in the second quarter and the limit was 20 lakh. Limit was 20 lakh, you achieved 23 lakh. So how much did you cross it by 3 lakh? That means how many shares? If you calculate, it will be 3 lakh. So don't bother about the weights, give the full thing. Okay, like that. Next again, check sir. What is the consolidated profit for third quarter? 19 lakh. The limit was 20 lakh. You achieved only 19. That means condition C failed. That means no shares will be issued like that. Okay. Next, the fourth quarter. How much was the final consolidated profit? It became 29 lakh. Okay. So did it cross 20 lakh? Yes, it crossed nine, uh, 20 lakh by 9 lakh rupees. So if the profit exceeds by exceeds by 1000 rupees means you will get 1000 shares. If it crosses by 9 lakh rupees means how many shares? 9 lakh shares. So totally you will give 9 lakh shares. And the year ended also, you'll consider 9 lakh because the profit has exceeded in reality by 9 lakh rupees. So don't give the weights, just keep it like this. So if you add all this, you're going to get the veins for dilute DPS purpose. Each we've already calculated here. So 1 divided by 2 will give you the dilute DPS. That's all as a funda about this. So for consolidated, if you have contingently issuable shares, for depth purpose, don't bother about the weight. If it is satisfied, assign the full thing. Okay, that is one. And for earning contingency, check. If, if you are in first quarter, think. If, you are, if the first quarter was the end of my period means whether the contingency shares will be issued or not. If the condition is getting satisfied, issue full shares. If it is not satisfied, issue zero shares. Like that. Don't bother about the weights. Assign full or nothing over here. Okay. This is one. Uh, yes. And then, uh, okay, let's take this question number 28. Income from continuing operation is 30 lakh. Income from discontinuing operation is 36 lakh. We already saw this, right? We've studied in days 101, uh, 105. 
So if you have any discontinued operation, continuous continuing operation ka data income and expense you should show, show separately. Discontinuing operation ka income and expense you need not show. You only need to show profit before tax, tax expense and profit after tax. So here we have both CO as well as DO. This is your CO, this is your DO. Uh, CO ka it is a profit, DO discontinued operation ka it's a loss. So if you add both put together, total you will get TO as in total operation. 30 minus 36 lakh if you add it, you're going to get 6 lakh. Overall the company may has made a loss. Weighted average shares outstanding is 10 lakh. Okay. Okay. Fine. That is one sir. You need to calculate debts and debts in first scenario. So you always calculate debts and debts for the at a total level. All right. Um, maybe you can do it at individual level also. Here you do it at individual level. You report it at total level like that. Hmm? First, calculates. First you do it for uh, basic EPS for CO. What is continuing operation ka ish? Ish the income. Income only. If they don't give any data, income itself will be taking it as ish. What is the income? 30 lakh. How much is the number of equity shares outstanding? 10 lakh. Okay, so 30 lakh divided by 10 lakh will give you CO ka basic EPS to be 3 rupees positive. Okay, next is what sir? Discontinuing operation ka. It's, a, it's not a profit, it's a loss. Yes, so earnings attributable to equity shareholders is not positive. No, it's a loss, 36 lakh divided by veins. Sir, you will not have veins separately for CO, DO and all. Veins is for the whole company and CO, DO are part of the whole company. No? So same veins you will take. How much is the veins? 10 lakh. So 36 divided by 36 lakh loss divided by 10 lakh will give you 3.6 negative. So that means what sir? This is not earnings per share. This is loss per share. Okay. And the sir loss per share also will report a yes. The chapter name is India's 33 earnings per share. The chapter name is not profit per share. So the chapter name is earnings per share. So earnings could be profit or earnings could be loss. Doesn't matter. Even if it is profit per share, we will report. Even if it is loss per share, we will report. Okay. So if it is loss per share, we'll show it as a negative number like that. Okay. And finally, total operations ka. Overall basic EPS ka. Overall company made how much loss? 6 lakh. What is the number of shares they have? 10 lakh. So 6 lakh divided 6 lakh loss divided by 10 lakh. Wins uh, will be how much? Will give you uh, basic EPS of or basic loss per share of 0. 0.6. Like this. Okay, sir. Okay. This is about debts. Next about debts. Debts may they have given one more number. Incremental common shares outstanding related to stock option. So we have some stock options. And we know that in case of stock, op uh, stock option, Exercise price will not be equal to market price. Exercise price will be much lower than market price. Meaning some shares will be issued for nil consideration. That they only calculated in this problem. We don't have to calculate. So nice problem. They only told this is the shares issued for nil consideration is 2 lakh. So that means this is only your DA as in dilution adjustment. So they only given dilution adjustment as 2 lakh over here. Okay. So you need to calculate with this depths. So how do you calculate depths over here? Uh, one minute sir. Where is it next number? Huh? Hmm, depths. First we will calculate it for uh, CO. Uh, continuing operation. What is continuing operation ka earnings sir? 30 lakhs. That will not change because this option only will impact the denominator. No? So divided by veins. What was the veins? 10 lakh plus a dilution adjustment of 2 lakhs. So 30 lakh divided by 12 lakh. If you do, you're going to get 2.5. I'm not computed this. No? Okay. I think it's given over here. In fact, here only it is computed. This is 2.5. Then you have to calculate it for DO. Same. What is DO ka profit sir? DO ka profit nahi. It's a case of loss. This is 36 lakh divided by 12 lakh. That means this will be 3 negative. Okay. Then it is TO. What is the TO? Total operation ka loss was 12 lakh divided by 6 lakh divided by 12. It was 0 0.5. Okay. Now do a comparison. Sir. What comparison? Sir? Check. What was, I think I should have written it. Baju made it a bit easier. One minute. Okay. Let me see if I can move this across. Hmm. Sir, this is your depths, right? So let's also write BEPS for our purpose for clarification purpose or for analysis purpose. What is the BEPS you already calculated sir? BEPS for continuing operation was 3 and uh, discontinued operation it was 3.6 uh, and here it was uh, how much? Uh, total it was uh, where is the total? Uh, here 0 0.6. Okay. Oh, sir what did I say? Only diluted EPS we will report. If it is anti-dilutive we will not report. That's what I said. Now check here. So first let's check whether it's a dilutive or anti-dilutive here. Okay. So first, what is the basic EPS? This is the BEPS. So we're going from here to here. That's the comparison. Basic EPS is through, uh, 3 rupees. Diluted EPS is 2.5. That means EPS reduce. No? So if it is uh, reduce, it means it is dilutive. It is anti-dilutive or dilutive? It is dilutive. Only. Correct. No? So it is reduced. From 3 it has become 2.5. So good only. It has to reduce. It has reduced. So no problem. Now, DO ka you do com comparison, discontinued operation ka. Basic EPS was, it's a loss per share. Loss was 3.6. So when you're talking about dilution, no? when you're talking about dilution, when you're working from profit, 
when you're working from profit angle, when you say diluted EPS per room, diluted EPS per share means that when you're working from profit per share perspective, if you if you want to get diluted EPS, diluted EPS per share should reduce. See from here it has become three, it has become 2.5. So it is diluted because it has reduced. But when you're working from loss per share, when it becomes dilutive, the loss per share should increase. If it is 3.6 here means it should increase, correct? Now profit should reduce, then it is dilution or loss should increase, then it is dilution. Here loss per share for discontinued operation was 3.6 basic EPS. But diluted EPS is giving you a 3. Loss per share from 3.6 it became 3. That means loss is reducing sir. Sir if loss is reducing means this is anti-dilutive now. So you just now told anti-dilutive should not be reported. Ha. Huh. That is a concept. What concept is? So to test whether it is dilutive or anti-dilutive. No. We will not consider discontinued operation. What we need to consider it continuing operation. You need to check continuing operation and see whether it is dilutive or anti-dilutive. Discontinuing operation, we will not worry about. So why sir? Sir, discontinuing operation means you have already stopped the operations, right? And so when you have stopped the operations, it is expected that maybe probably it is making loss and when you stop the operations, you will incur further loss. So that means this is a loss making division. So the, hence that is a wrong thing because operation itself is stopped means you will get erratic numbers. So hence do come, uh, so doing a, taking a decision based on that number is wrong. That's the reason our decision of dilute or anti-dilute we only take by taking by keeping continuing operations in mind. You only check continuing operation and then define whether it is a dilutive or anti-dilutive. So what happened to basic EPS of continuing operation? 3. What is the diluted EPS? 2.5. Yes. From 3 it is reduced to 2.5. That means it is what? Dilutive. Okay. That means what sir? This and all you can show. Okay. You don't have to worry about discontinuing operation. Discontinuing ka number could be anything. We will not even check. Only continuing ka operation ka, it should not be anti-dilute. So this both we will report. That's what they've given over here. And this we call it as control number. There is one check, okay? Control number. Control number is always continuing operation. We check that we check whether dilutive or anti-dilutive. We use continuing operations. That we call it as control number in India 33 perspective. And the control number should always be CO and not DO or uh, TO. Okay, that is one. Second scenario where they modify. What have they modified? Assume in the above case, loss from continuing operation. They modify the data. Think that from continuing operation, we have a loss. From discontinuing operation, we have a profit. They interchange the data. In that case, what will happen? So let's work out. Continuing operation, there is a loss of 10 lakh, it seems. Number of equity shares is still 10 lakh. That means the loss per share is 1. So DO, DO they said there is a profit of 36 lakh. Number of equity shares is 10. Uh, that means this is 3.6. Total operation, 36 minus 10 lakh, which will be 26 lakh divided by 10, which is 2.6. This is your basic EPS wala calculation. These numbers, they only given. I've just taken and plugged it. Calculate the diluted EPS. What about, what about diluted EPS? Same, each is still 10 lakh only. What about diluted EPS, sir? Can you take 10 lakh? No, 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 no. There were some shares issued for nil consideration. Options they only told in the problem. Yeah, common shares outstanding related to stock option is 2 lakh. This is your dilution adjustment. So denominator becomes 12 lakh. So 10 lakh divided by 12 lakh you do. This is a 10 lakh loss. Loss became 0.83. This is a continuing operation. Check, sir. Here only you need to check whether it is diluted or anti-dilutive. Basic EPS was loss. Loss per share was one. Sir, if you want to call it as dilutive, loss per share should increase. Profit side may if you're working, it has to reduce. Loss per share may if you're working means it has to increase. Basic EPS was one. So diluted EPS should increase. Has it, did it increase? No, rather it reduced. Sir, loss per share is reducing. Therefore, continuing operation is creating what, sir? It is giving you a dilutive EPS or it's giving you anti-dilutive EPS. Since loss per share is reduced, it is a dilute, anti-dilutive scenario and anti-dilutive EPS, no sir, we don't report. Anti-dilutive EPS, we don't report. Hence, what do we do? Basic EPS is this, no? We make the basic EPS. What is the basic EPS of total operation? 2.6. Basic EPS and diluted EPS, we take, make it as same. This we will not show. Hence, sir, if this only is giving anti-dilutive, we will not even bother checking this. So, if this is the checkpoint. If con continuing operation only is giving you anti-dilutive scenario, other two, ka, you need not even work it out. You not even bother. Okay? Keep it dash. So this cannot be reported. So in this case, what diluted EPS we don't report. Huh? No, no. What we do is this diluted EPS we won't report. So in that case, how will we report, sir? What is the basic EPS of total operation? 2.6. That only we will report it as diluted EPS. Meaning basic EPS and diluted EPS will make as same. If continuing operation gives you anti-dilutive scenario, we make basic EPS and diluted EPS to be same and report both at the same number like this. This will only do it if continuing operation is giving you anti-dilutive scenario. That's what is given over here. It's expressed in words. Okay, Sarji. All right. Now, there's one uh, question which is not tasked. Suddenly, it came off in one MTP paper. So, I thought I'll quickly do it. Sir, what is this? Sir, if you have uh, multiple potential ordinary shares, 
if you have more than one uh, potential ordinary shares like convertible preference shares, convertible debentures, options, etc., etc. In this case, no sir, one of them could be anti dilutive. We don't know. One of them could be anti dilutive. We don't know. So that's the reason. Whenever you have multiple POS, no sir, you need to follow one step. That step I will quickly run you through in this particular problem. There's an MTP question, I think. Okay, or RTP question. I'm not very sure. Okay, it's there somewhere. You can just check this. The following information is related to Space India Limited. For the financial year 20 X1 X2. Net profit attributable to equity shareholders 90 lakh. Number of equity shares outstanding is 16,000. This is actual. So that means this is your each, this is your wins. So basic EPS is what? 90 divided by 16, which is what? 5.625. That is very straightforward. Okay. Average fair value of one equity shares is 90. They are seeing. Great. Options. That means this is your market price they have given. Hmm? 900 options they have given at an exercise price of 75. Oh, yo. Okay. Exercise price is 75, but market price is 90. So obviously, some options will be issued for nil consideration. You want to put whole drama or we'll do it in one line. We'll do it in one line. What is that, sir? 900 options, they can buy it at 75. No? So do one 900 into 75. That will be the total proceeds. If, if your total proceeds is this much and the price of one share is 90 means how many shares can you buy? If you do this, 900 into 75 divided by 90, you will get 750. So only 750 options should have been purchased. But the company gave an option to buy 900 shares. So 900 minus 750 will give you option issued for nil consideration, which is 150. That is one. Okay, next convertible preference shares. 7,500 convertible preference shares we have with a dividend of 9 per share. So if you convert means this much dividend you will save. On one share you are giving a dividend of 9 rupees. On 7,500 shares the dividend will be 6,700. So 60, if you convert this means these are convertible. So all these are POS basically. They only called out. Okay, so if you convert means your each, this becomes your dilution adjustment. Your each will increase by 6,700 because preference dividend will get saved. And on each preference shares is convertible into two shares. So we have 7,500 preference shares. On each preference shares, you need to give two equity shares. So how many preference shares you need to give? Or how many equity shares you need to give? 7,000 into two, which is what, sir? 15,000 equity shares you need to give out. Okay. Then we had a convertible debentures. 10% convertible debentures, 10 lakh each. Each debenture is convertible into four shares. First of all, how many, how many number of debentures we have? 10 lakh is the total number of, total value of debentures. Each face value is 100 means the number of debentures is 10,000. Okay, on one debentures, we need to give four shares. On 10,000 debentures, how many equity shares you need to give? 40,000 equity shares. So, if you convert these debentures into equity shares, you will have some savings in interest. How much will be savings in interest? 10 lakh is the debenture value into 10% is the interest rate. So, that means interest will be 1 lakh. You can't take interest, we have to take interest into 1 minus tax rate. First of all, have they given tax rate? Yeah, they have given tax rate. So, you need to do interest into 1 minus tax rate. So, that means 1 minus point, 1 lakh into 0. 0.75, which will be 75,000. So, you have got everything. The problem here is, sir, when you have multiple POS, normally if this was given to you, you would have considered everything and worked out your diluted EPS and drama would have been over. Yes. But no, sir, the problem is um, in this, you know, which should, if, <clears throat> excuse me, say all of them will, all of them will not get exercised in one go, right? All of them get, will ex get exercised on different, different dates. So it's possible that if one get exercised before the other, some of them could relate to into anti dilutive wala scenario. How, sir? So the, I'll, I'll just check over here. So do a thing in whenever you have POS, no, the first thing that you have to do it is calculate. You have three POS over here. For each of them, you calculate the EPS separately. For each of them, you calculate the EPS separately. EPS separately means check. So due to option, is there any impact in the earnings? For EPS, you need one number in the numerator, one number in the denominator. Normally, potential ordinary shares me only consider dilution adjustment. No? Dilution adjustment to each, dilution adjustment to Wales. So you forget the each and veins, only consider the dilution adjustment. Only consider the dilution adjustment and work out the EPS. Okay. That is what you need to do in these sort of things. For this, you do it for ranking purpose. So this we do to find out which among these instruments are most dilutive, which will give you the most dilutive. And based on that, we need to rank. Okay. Since what you do it is this check. Because of option, if the option get converted in, because of option, is there any dilution adjustment in uh, each? No, there is no dilution adjustment in each. But there is only dilution adjustment in veins. What is that? How many shares are issued for nil consideration? I think we already worked out that. How much is that? 150. So zero impact in the numerator and one denominator will increase by 150. Only keeping this set to you work out EPS. Okay. Only this. This is the incremental EPS we are talking about. Only this impact you consider in your EPS. Zero, zero in the numerator divided by 150 in the denominator. So that means what you will get, sir? Finally, you will get zero only. Correct. Huh? So final impact, final effect is zero. Okay. Like that, you have to do it for your debentures also, preference shares also. So first we'll do it for convertible preference shares. We already worked out the data. Sir, if you convert the preference shares, means how much you will save in the form of dividend. 
67,500. So this is your each car dilution adjustment. And how much equity shares you have to issue? 15,000. So that is your Wayne's car dilution adjustment. 67,000 earnings will increase. 15,000 equity shares will increase. So only take this and work out the EPS. 67 in the numerator. 67,500 in the numerator, 15,000 in the denominator. So 67,500 divided by 15,000 if you do, you're going to get 4.5. That is giving you an EPS of 4.5. Meaning due to this, EPS will increase by 4.5 is what we're trying to compute. Okay, hence they're calling it as incremental EPS. All right, same thing you would put do it for debentures. What is the impact on your each interest you'll save to the extent of 75,000 and equity shares will increase by 40,000. So 75,000 here and 40,000 there. So 75 divided by 40 will give you 1.875 ka EPS. Now check sir, which among this is giving you the lowest EPS? The one which is giving you the lowest EPS is the most dilutive. The one which is giving you the lowest EPS is the most dilutive because it is giving you very, very less EPS. That's the reason it is most dilutive. This is giving you 4.5. Okay, this is giving you more. This is giving you 1.875. This is literally giving you zero. That means this is the the one which is most dilute or if you want it in simple terms give the rank based on this you need to assign ranks don't give the ranks in assigning ascending order give the ranks in descending order higher the number lower the rank lower the number higher the rank like that this is giving you zero that means this gives you the first rank okay this is giving you the highest number no that means last rank there are only three instruments so the last rank is three this is giving you 1.875 so that means this is the second rank so you'll rank based on the the most dilutive here option is the most dilutive after that this will come after that 4.5 ka effect will come so based on that you need to rank otherwise rank it in the descending order higher the number lowest the rank low lowest number highest rank like that okay this is the lowest number so you give first rank to that like that hmm? great so after ranking what do we do now sir normally when you have to work out diluted eps you have to consider everything no now what you do is you work out your normal eps you work out your normal diluted eps by considering these instruments one by one by one not everything together or one by one. normally diluted eps we consider everything together no but one among them may be anti-dilutive in multiple POS. that's the reason you have to work them one by one by one by one then only you'll get to know if anything is anti-dilutive you already ranked so first we'll do the working for options so first what is the here what is the basic, uh, what is the each for basic EPS purpose? They only told in the problem 90,000. What is the way in sir? 16,000. You already worked out basic EPS also as 5.625. Here also we only got it, right? So each is 90,000, way in is 16,000. So that I've taken. Then first of what we should consider options. So due to option, is there any dilution adjustment? No, which is zero. Due to option, is there any dilution adjustment in veins? Yeah. How much is that? 150 options are issued for nil consideration. So add it. How much are you going to get? 90,000 plus 0 is 90,000. 16,000 plus 150 is 16,000. So work out now. This is your each for depth's purpose. This is your veins for depth's purpose. So if you do 90 divided by 1, uh, 16, 150, you're getting 5.572. Sorry, your basic EPS was 5.6. Dilated EPS has become 5.5. So that means this is a case of what? EPS is reducing. And it's a positive number, positive EPS. So it is reducing. So obviously it's a case of dilutive. Like that, you need to next work with another one. What is the second rank instrument we got it, sir? Second rank instrument was debentures. Now consider only debentures. Okay. Now, sir, what was the debenture ka impact in your earnings? We already taken that. 75,000. That means due to debenture, your earnings will increase by 75,000. So it will not be 90,000 now. From 90,000, it will increase by 75,000. 90 plus 75 will be 165. What was the veins before this? 160, 150. So due to convertible debentures, your veins will increase by 40,000. So it will be 16,150 plus 40,000 if you do, you're going to get the number 56,150. So take these two numbers now. This is your, if we're doing one by one, that's the reason. Yeah, this is your earnings for debts purpose. This is your veins for your debts purpose. Do these two, you're going to get 2.939. Previous number was 5.5. .5. From 5.5, it became 2.93. That means this is a case of, again, it's reducing, so it is dilute. Now two are over, two down, one more to go. What is the last rank instrument, which is preference shares. Due to preference shares, you are each... Ka dilution adjustment is 67,500 and veins ka 15,000. Add 67,500 to each, 15,000 to veins. From 165, if you add 167,500, uh, it will become 232,500. And here it will become 271,500. Okay. Normally, what do you do? You will add all the instrument. Finally, you will get this number. You will add all the instrument in denominator. You will get this number and calculate. Here you have to do it one by one. So when you do it one by one, check how did you get? How much EPS are you getting? 3.628. So previous EPS was 2.93. Now it become 3.92. That means it is increasing. So diluted EPS means EPS should increase or reduce. Or it should reduce, but here it increased. That means what, sir? This is anti-dilutive. Anti-dilutive, there's no country control or continuous operation on all over here. That means all this operation are continuing only. If it is discontinuing operation, clearly they will tell. That means all this data is related to what? CO only. If they don't mention anything, every data is related to CO only. 
okay okay so that means what's co is relating to anti dilutive scenario means can you report it no what you can report the one above number which is what 2.939 so you will report diluted dps only at 2.939 okay like that so this one instrument among these pos are anti dilutive okay that's easy so now if you anti dilutive we make basic eps diluted dps same no sir yeah but here no sir we don't have one instrument we have three instrument not all the three are not anti dilutive only one is anti dilutive hence this only we cut off we don't make basic eps and diluted dps same here okay there we had only one instrument and that was anti dilutive hence we made basic eps and diluted dps same here we don't have one we have three and in the three one is anti dilutive so this you don't report the next above number you report which is 2.939 so you will report the diluted dps as 2.939 like that. that's this working okay sir yeah these are some good question which i saw in in days 33 so with this this particular topic for live you khatam okay thank you